KJ and Chris take over the show on this Gun Talk Nation to talk about the no guns allowed sign. What do you do and how do you confront it? All right, welcome in Gun Talk Nation. I am your stand-in host, KJ, and to my left, your listening dial right, is Mr. Chris Serino. He is, what do, what do you exactly do you do around here at Gun Talk? Uh, I do a little bit of everything, Kevin. I think you should know that by now. <laughs> he did. He really does. He really do do a lot, like way more than just a little bit of everything, though. Like, it's way more than what your job job description is. Uh, but today we are brought to you by Sig Sauer, Ballistic Advantage, EOTech, and Nosler. Thank you for your support. We appreciate it as always. Um, Chris, the boss is away. The mice will play. Right. So I don't we know like, if there's any playing going on. <laughs> we commandeered, we pretty much commandeered his podcast. I commandeered it last week and now I'm going to commandeer it this week uh, to chat. And we're going to have a conversation that is a real conversation that I think we all should have. And it all stems from a few, uh, an incident, an incident that happened a few days ago. Right. So what was that incident? Well, there was a shooting in an Indiana mall. And uh, a bad guy went in, bad guy with a gun, and ultimately a good guy with a gun took him out, except there's a twist. There is a twist. And that's what I think, that's what caught my eye, and I think that's what caught the eye of most in the nation. Yeah, there's a couple of things. First and foremost, uh, he did not have a carry permit because it is constitutional carry now over there. So he was carrying. Thank you, Indiana. Yes, under new, new laws in Indiana. Uh, he was 22 years old, which is just like one or two years older than anybody should be to ever own a gun. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? I know you're not. Did you just to... did you just drop a a subtle like grenade in the room and run out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean the kid, the guy. I mean he's a kid. I mean I would have thought I was a guy back then, but uh, you know the kid's 22 years old. He doesn't even have a concealed carry permit, and he's in a mall where where you cannot carry according to the door according to the sign on the door <laughs> it's a gun free zone now that didn't stop the bad guy either and the good guy with the gun wasn't there to kill anybody nope he was just carrying a gun for which, his protection which was thankfully for his oh. protection and the protection of others well it because we all deal with this problem is you walk up to a door, any door, and you see a no gun zone. Um, and I'm not going to say we all do it or we all don't do it, but I know what I do. Um, I don't know what you do, and you don't know what I do. I don't I know do, what you do. But I can tell you this, that I <laughs> whatever I do, I will accept the consequences. Yes, you have to. But so what was the response time? What was the response time? That's you. <laughs> the I know response. it's it's my phone's buzzing it's on the table, right the, and he's just he did, Chris just right. sits there and looks at me. So if well, you're listening to this on the radio, it, yeah, if it was me, like, it would be terrible. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, the cops' response time was actually really fast at two minutes. I mean, two minutes. I can't imagine what would have happened. His response time, not the cops. No, no, that was the police. Oh, really? I think the police were there in in. Or was it? No, it was what? his. I don't have it in front of me. Kevin. See, and it was I, at his this point. Now you got me it. Was confused. his? It was his response time was two minutes. You're he right. was there the within was two minutes. For two minutes, the the good guy got there. I don't know what the cops' response time was because I don't think they put that in there. Now in the article, uh, in everything that I've read, okay, I've been looking it up like crazy, and there's not a lot of information. But in everything that I've read, um, they don't talk about the law enforcement response, and they really very, and very few of them, do they even mention that the mall was a gun-free zone? Well, that's probably by design, I would assume. Yeah, because right? if they said that he was in there in a gun-free zone and the bad guy came in with a gun, that would kind of be like... Uh, but I, mean, I think what you're saying is, is the good guy did not brandish his firearm before before the shooting started. Right. But how is that possible? How is it possible that a good guy or person, whoever, I thought 
automatically like that's what they do. They just show their gun and like, hey, I've got a gun, everybody. Like, yeah, that's but, the whole idea. The whole idea, and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, that concealed carry means it's concealed. It means it's covered. It means it's hidden. You try to hide unsightly bulges. You try to not do uh, movements that let other people know that you're you're packing a heater. You know, you don't you don't tug on your shirt. But, you don't rub your elbow on your gun. You don't do all those things, those telltale signs, mm-hmm. and no one will ever know you have a gun. And if they ask you if you have a gun, you just tell them you don't because you don't. No, they don't know. They, and there's, they can't search you. No, they can't touch you. They can't search you. You just, but you cannot let anybody know you have right. a gun. And if there's an unsightly bulge somewhere, you know. Besides my stomach. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know about you. Because <laughs> my stomach is is getting out there. That's my colostomy bag. And yeah. I'm kind of sensitive about that. So I'd appreciate it if you didn't talk about it <laughs> or point at it. Yeah. I mean, they can't say any different. They don't know you. That's my medical condition they, yeah. to deal with and not your And you can't, you can't ask about that. That's right. Don't ask well, about it. So police response times. You were an officer. Of yeah. the law, um, talk about police. Res- I, we're not going to throw officers under the table. I, I, that's not the purpose no, you, of this. We're the talking facts about are the facts. It's right. not throwing cops under the bus. Well, I know, but but I don't want to generalize every department as a whole and just say, well, they're all slow. No, they're not all right there. Is kind of my point. No, this guy was right there. And a lot of times, and, and here's the deal. And not everybody knows this. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's common knowledge but if i would get a 911 call or a 911 hang up say let's say you get a 911 hang up you get dispatched to those all the time yeah they say yeah uh, you know 232 go ahead uh, we got a 911 hang up over at uh gun talk studios yeah and you're and you're like okay so you get a 911 hang up you have no information now most 911 hang ups and 911 calls are nothing right they're absolutely nothing so we were not really we were not permitted we were not supposed to drive emergency lights and sirens to a 911 call okay now do you know that i did i i i had it i knew that i knew that like you kind of had to come in subtle yeah well i mean it's not about coming in subtle it's just that you don't speed to it you just drive with the regular flow of traffic right because if granny's in front of you doing 45 and you're in a 55 you're doing 45 because unless you're using both lights and sirens you're not allowed to break the law okay i did not know that you have to be using both lights and talk with some officers i know (laughs) know. we we all did it i mean (laughs) and and there was times like you know you'd get to a red light and you'd go whoop whoop Whoop, whoop. Yeah. You go through it because mm-hmm. you're kind of in a hurry, but you're not in right. a hurry because you're not allowed to be in a hurry. Okay. So if I was speeding to this meaningless 911 call and I get in an accident, okay. Then that's a big problem, right? Right. So say the say the first one or two calls, you know, people they can't ascertain what's going on at the mall. Right. How fast do you think the cops are going to come? Not fast. Now, if they I get didn't know two, that. you're going to go a little faster. But if you just get one and it's like a hang-up call or the line goes dead, I mean, nobody's going to rush. Nobody's going to rush right. over there. I mean, <clears throat> even I w- with shots fired, you can only do so much. Even with an active shooter call coming in, like they, they still, there's still rules that you guys have to follow. Well, yeah, I, I mean, you got you're going to get there as quick as you. Signs. You got to stop right. at red lights. You're, you're slowing go due as to fast traffic. As you can, but you still got to get through it. And what if traffic is thick both ways? Well, where were the mall cops? And are they real? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. He just paused and just like gave me this stare, like, well, oh, what I'm kind just of wondering <laughs> if my ex is still dating a mall cop? That's all. <laughs> When you say that, it makes me laugh. But, but I mean, that, that's a valid point. The the typically the mall cops are not the top tier, you know, you know door bashers. They're not the guys. Yeah, but who, neither was this kid. They took no, out he the wasn't. shooter. He was. And nothing. I would be interested to see what his training was. He has none. They said on there he has no, no training. official training, no military, no nothing. Now it does not say if he was a competitive shooter. Well, that's fair. Because they say but, he aggressed on the target. He gave verbal commands. And as soon as no he kidding. started shooting yeah. at the, the bad guy, the bad guy 
uh, backed off, pulled away, tried to hide into the bathroom, but he didn't make it that far. Yeah. But he was the reports that I've I've seen. He was the gunman was in the bathroom for over an hour before he came out. Oh, before he started. Before shooting? he came out, yeah. So that's and where he's probably staging prep, and getting staging. himself ready. Yeah, and you'd think somebody would notice that. You would think, uh, but no, not all people are as observant well, as you. Which which not everybody says something when they do see something. That's another good point. I mean, I mean we it, don't want to be offensive. I mean, if if the guy looked like maybe a little bit of a freak show or somebody that is, I don't know. I mean, he could have looked mentally handicapped. He could have looked like uh, one of the oppressed uh, people in our society. I mean, and but nobody wants he to could, say anything. But he could have looked like a normal dude. And, and he could have looked totally that's, normal. That was just, you know, that may be the hang up on people. Oh, I'm sure he's got... He's got IBS or something like that. Like he's just dealing with some things. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean it, it, that that is exactly what could have happened. Um, now, when we get up on the other side of this break, I want to I want to talk a little bit more about this and go into, you know, kind of, um, just kind of what we've got going on and and how you kind of go about the no gun sign because. I think that's worth. I mean, I don't think is you it, talk about it. How can it's hard not to talk about it? I know, but there are people that will, they will always do what they're told. Yes, and people will tell on you if you don't. Tattle tales. All right, we're gonna jump in with a word from our sponsors. Hey, this Gun Talk Nation, specially co-hosted by KJ and Chris, is brought to you by Six Hour, the new P322 from Six Hour is their first U.S. designed and manufactured 22 long rifle pistol. We've shot it. We love it. It's awesome. Uh, it's super accurate and it runs and it's got 20 plus one round capacity more than any other compact 22 on the market it's optics ready thread adapted so you can screw on a suppressor right there um, single action trigger with interchangeable shoes so a flat trigger or a curved trigger whichever you prefer uh, you can find out more at sixhour.com ballistic advantage manufacture precision quality rifle barrels uppers lowers and other firearm components for a range of users so no matter what you're looking for if you're looking for you know, an upper or lower um, ballistic advantage has you taking care of their barrels are what I'm more familiar with because I have three ballistic advantage barrels now. And there's a reason why I keep going back to them is because they are high quality. They are very accurate barrels. Um, it's the perfect mix of U.S. craftsmanship and state-of-the-art manufacturing. Uh, barrels from ballistic advantage rank among the best money can buy while prices rank among the best value. BallisticAdvantage.com and Nosler Defense Handgun Ammunition is loaded up front with the bonded performance line of bonded core defensive bullets. You know a thing or two about that, don't you, Chris? I do. <laughs> See, he knows all. Available in either jacketed hollow point or polymer-tipped configuration and featuring proven AccuBond bonding technology, its bonded performance bullets are designed for high weight retention and maximum barrier penetration. There's a time and place for all defensive ammo, right? Yeah. No matter what you choose. Like so so where would you use a jacketed hollow point? In what application? I would use it in my carry gun when I didn't want it to over penetrate and I would want it to be bonded so that the jacket stayed with the lead and it would carry more mass and it would expand uh, uniformly. Okay, and where would you prefer to use the polymer tipped configuration? Uh, you know what? That would be something for me. That would probably be a barrier penetration. That would be in my in my concealed carry gun. Also, okay, it would depend. You know, depend on where the you're polymer going. tipped. What that does is it's designed to push into the bullet, so it starts up. Now, sometimes people will say hollow points can get clogged up with stuff. Right, they don't expand and they'll act like a. A full metal jacket. But, you know, I haven't experienced anything like that, you know, and, of course, shooting them into gel, they're always going to do what they're designed to exactly. do. Exactly. But when you shoot them into everything else. You start to get some weird stuff, don't yeah, you? they're going to do what they want to <laughs> do. But you can find out more at Nosler.com. Go give them a look. I highly recommend it. Uh, Nosler, they... 
they do good work. They haven't. I haven't. I love the Acubon. They make great ammunition. They great re- quality. They really do. So, uh, give them a look, please, won't you? Pretty please. Nosler dot com. All right, getting back onto this uh, this event that happened. This this they're going to call a mass shooting, and and I believe a mass shooting was prevented. I know what I forgot to tell you. Oh yeah, what is it? Did I tell you that my son Colton was in a club? Uh, a couple weeks ago, when, no. when Gib was here, uh-uh. and uh, they threw a guy out, and he came back in with a 9 millimeter and started shooting the place up. Wait, what? Yeah. Colton was there when it happened. Oh, yeah, of course. It was late, and they oh, were yeah. to pick somebody up, and he was there. And, and then he's there. And- he, said his, he said, we need to do more sur- <laughs> He said, we need to do more scenario training where you don't have a gun. Oh my gosh! So first person, have a knife, so said. first person defender. We just got done filming that, <clears throat> and we do our we. I believe we do our best to replicate real scenarios, and the no gun sign. You're right. Maybe one of the first things we ask them is, "Are you a rule follower?" Yeah. And if they go, "Yeah, I, I follow the rules. I'm a law abiding citizen." Okay. Well, today you've got a no gun free zone. You're going in. Oh, I've done that. I've done that with a. What's uh, the response? I well, mean, you, they get. We have to shoot them because they you, can't do anything. They can't unless do anything. you can get out. I mean, or so, hands on. So what Colton did was, uh, he said, "Man, my training kicked in." He said, "I heard it popping off," and uh, I looked up. I saw it going on, and I I looked left. I looked right. Uh, he said he ran to the back, went into the kitchen, stopped to see if anybody was there that he could help get out. Nobody was there. He said he went straight out the back door up over a 12-foot chain link fence. And when he got to the top, he said he hopped off of it and landed on his keister, you know, and well, hurt yeah. himself. He said, man, he ran and ran, and he got his phone out and called 911. And he said nobody had called 911 yet. Nobody. You're kidding. Yeah, he just bolted. Well, <clears throat> but, I mean, that's what you do. And it's it's interesting because. He said he bobbed and weaved, as a matter of fact. He well, said, man, I was bobbing and weaving, and I got out of there. Yeah. Good. That I mean, that's a lesson to all of us because um, if you are one of those diligent rule followers, exit signs are everything, and do not enter signs. Well, I can't go back there. You know what he said? What he said, man, I'm never going anywhere without a gun again. <laughs> that's what he said. Yeah, I told him. I said, listen, man, I get it, but you have got this. Is a perfect topic, isn't it? It, it really I said, is. I get it, but you have got to be careful. I mean. I mean, He's honestly, because right. he could lose his rights, he could lose everything, everything, you know, and it's it, but it's so bad. And the thing is, man, you just can't, I think a bug just hit me in the eye. You cannot, <laughs> you cannot do stupid things when you're carrying a gun. There's a lot of things you can't do, but. And your thought process has to be greater. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah. You're, you're well, thinking. you have to be very clear. You can't, you can't just screw around and you can't just. You know, you can't think I got a gun, I'm going to save the world. I mean, you still want to get away because yeah. you don't want to have to use it. But this kid in Indiana, this young man, he did a good thing. He did a great thing. Um, and unfortunately, there are there are people out there that are giving him grief. And, and you know, I got to say, I read a bunch of articles and... I, I mean, there's a lot of people that are going kind of like, oh, I see a good guy with a gun saved him. But they're not saying, like, he did anything bad. They're not. I didn't no. read anything bad. But, man, you you know they are just dying because this guy did the right yes, thing. Yes, he did the right thing, 100%. When he carried inside that mall, I believe he did the right mm. thing. And they're all saying, oh, well, somebody else might not be able to react that way. And somebody well, else. He had might no not. training. No. And this right. goes, to, this goes back to well, we like, need to talk the to whole him. basis. We need to get into his mind and yeah. ask him how much he's trained like, his brain over time. What have you, what have you done? I mean, you're right. Have you trained your brain over this? Have you, you I mean, he obviously made the decision to carry the firearm there. So he got past square one is doing the right thing by, by pants on gun on. That's what Tom Gresham always says. Pants on gun on. Um, and if, I mean, let's say he didn't have any training, but maybe you're right. Maybe he was training his mind. Like, okay, maybe he's very vigilant about looking at where he sits in a room or where his exits are, or when you enter somewhere, okay, if something happened, 
what am I going to do? Yeah. Is he a competitive shooter? What does he do? Right. Like what, what, what gave him that level of performance? They say he shot 10 times. Okay, 10 times to me. How many times did he hit? I want to know that. Like, what was it? They're not right? going to talk about that What's his either. Ba- what They're was his back? Tell what was his sight? What, would, what did his sights look like? They're like, not going to tell us any of the good stuff. You know that because the more successful he was, the, le- the they, less they're going to talk about it. You're right. Did he have carry insurance? Because that's, I mean, man. They said they, 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 the cops did, uh, they did hook him up. They well, handcuffed him and, I, and, and figured I would, it all out, which yeah. is what everybody should expect. Yes. I mean, everybody should expect to have that happen to them. I mean, yeah, and, and that's yeah, that's one of those things that you, you it's going to happen. But the police chief is really uh, sounds like he's pretty happy with what this kid did. How could he not be? All right, we're going to take a real quick break here. Uh, hear a word from our last couple of sponsors, and we do appreciate EOTech for hopping in here. Uh, they offer a wide variety of optics from holographic sights to magnifiers to rifle scopes, thermal and night vision, hybrid and pistol sights. They offer a wide range, and I'm sure you guys know that. Um, you know, the Voodoo line, which is, I've got one of these. It's a 1 to 10 by 28 rifle scope. It... <sighs> It might be one of the ultimate sighting solutions out there, offering a 34 millimeter tube, low profile, locking elevation turrets, and a one piece eyepiece. So, Did you say it was a one to 28 or it's a one, one to 10, 10 by, 28. by 28? Wow. One to 10 by 28. And I, think I like I've looked that. through that, and it's pretty clear from one to it's 10. It's crystal. It's crystal clear. And um, I do love I do love that optic, but you can find out more at eotechinc.com. And Ruger, the Max 9 micro size striker fire 9mm pistol offering 12 plus 1 capacity. Now, this is one that we've we've actually enjoyed. And, the, you know, I'll tell you another one that we really enjoyed is the LCP Max. That's a good one, too. Yeah, I like I like Ruger's Max line, especially the 380. Yeah. Because, they, I mean, oh it's gosh, the gun that you carry so when you can't carry a gun. Well, and, I mean, and you are very accurate with it because I've seen you shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so I can make it so, work. Oh, you can make, you, you, you can make any gun work. But I mean, it shoots and I like it. Yeah, and who doesn't like Ruger cuz they're all nice people and it's oh, American great. made, Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. I mean, and they make so many different things. Yeah. And every year it seems like they add like 10, 12 more guns every year. So you know. find out more at ruger.com and if you want to find out more about that Max 9 Visit Ruger.com backslash Max9. All right, Chris. I was just on the website because you know we're having them in for that class. We, we are. We're we're okay. Max 9. So I, I think this is a I, this is probably a very special show, and I'm actually a little bit disappointed um, that Ryan isn't doing this show because this is the first show shot in Range Ready. Yeah. How shocking is that? Last week we spent... We spent the majority of last week kind of moving all the boxes and everything in because if you guys have listened to Gun Talk or anything like that for long enough, you know we are switching offices. We're official now. I mean, it's over. It's here. Um, And it better be here because we're going to be filming a new show in the next two weeks. A a brand new show. We're not talking about a first-person offender. We're not talking about a guns and gear. We're talking about our new show, Build Box, Mm -hmm. uh, which... I, you and I are judges. I don't know how we ended up with that. Well, I mean, somebody had to do it. <laughs> yeah, they said uh, you two guys. Um, Ryan's going to be hosting, but it's but this show is the first uh, recorded content that is going out over our social platforms and all over our outlets um, in the studio. It this sounds great in here too. It I really does. Tell. there's no reverberation. There isn't none. And we even have concrete floors in here. So you can hear me sniffing and coughing. I bet I can. I bet you were. I you've been doing I, that. I, yeah. Well, no. you know, there's no cough <laughs> button on this microphone. You know, and I'm always. <laughs> yeah, I'm always sniffed up. I mean, I'm I always know. a mess. But <clears throat> but this is a this is kind of a big show for for gun talk as a whole. And you know, we wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for grits. If it hadn't been for Tom. You know, those guys were trailblazers, and Tom's still doing it. Um, so we appreciate everything that they did for gun talk, but I appreciate everything you guys did while I was in New Hampshire last week. 
Oh my gosh! You guys, yeah, we got we got. I it got far to move on Monday. Road. That was it. We got to move <clears> it down the line, but um, yeah, you were at the new Sig Sig experience, and yeah. I I guess you know I probably should have gave him a plug for that. But since we're talking about him, uh, what was the facility like? It was it's fantastic. If you've been to the Sig Pro Shop before, yep. um, it is nothing like what it was. Oh really? Yeah, it's really nice. I mean, it used to look like an old pawn shop where they had to buzz you in and everything. Yep. Now the new Sig Experience is a big, beautiful building, two stories wide open. It's got a museum in it. It's uh, it's got uh, live fire ranges inside, indoor Re- ranges. Really? How many bays? A bunch. Really? Yeah, a bunch. Uh, there's a there's a ton of ranges. Uh, you can touch all the guns. They're all on racks and stuff out really? in, in their segment. Everything they make. Out. Yeah, the new military guns are there. There's a whole military history section in there. No kidding. So it's a it's a yeah. big thing. So if you're in the Epping coffee shop, Black Rifle Coffee. No kidding. And beautiful, big, beautiful offices and meeting spaces upstairs with glass windows so you can actually see people. So could you, you know, could that. let's say someone's hosting a corporate event or something like that, would they be able to like maybe rent it out? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the classroom is amazing. The meeting room, plus they have like a, uh, I forget what he called it. It's just a, like a little cigar lounge yeah. area where you can go sit and uh, have pops and do stuff and watch over the whole store and sit up there. Really? Yeah, it's really nice. It's nothing like what it was. And and that's uh, still and in Epping, New Hampshire. It's on the same driveway. When you same one. Except it, there's, you remember how it was all woods and there was oh, just yeah. a sign there? Yeah. Well, now that whole wooded lot is cleared and that's where the th- No the kidding. Is. Yeah, it's right up front. Oh, that's awesome. I like it being up front and and kind of there for the whole world to see. And that's that's kind of And they don't idea. have uh no guns allowed signs on the doors. Thank goodness. <laughs> so what do you do? I mean, what what is what does someone do? What do you folks I mean, you're out there you're listening. What is it you do and what's on your mind? Do you have a plan? Because I have a plan. I've got ideas of what I'm gonna do. Number one, first and foremost. I fully intend to take my lumps if I'm ever, if I ever happen to carry a gun where it says don't, you can't carry. Right. I am first and foremost ready to take my lumps. I'm not going to yep. be indignant. I'm not going to be pissed off. I'm not going to be anything. No. I mean, because you're, you're making that choice. You're, you're saying, you know, I, I understand the ramifications that would likely come my way. However, if it did hit the fan, every one of you people out there would be thanking me. Yeah, just like they're thanking I mean, this young man now. And they sh- as they should. I mean, they should be thanking him because he stopped a catastrophic event. And and I I can't believe the kid only shot five people. He shot right. he killed three and uh, wounded two. Yeah. And he shot 24 times. That's Had, that's not a great ratio. No, it's not. I mean, it it's it's awful in every sense of the word, but I think there's some good that came out of it because you know, that's a, that's a, I heard video got it all from what I've been reading. Yeah. Uh, they say that everything has been captured on video and, uh, I'm looking forward I, to it. I would love to see it just, just as a, to train and training my mind. Well, they've got a tremendous amount of detail in the stories that they're telling about him. I mean, the fact that he, you know, he drew his gun, he aggressed the shooter, started firing from farther away, closed the distance and was using his hand to motion the people to get out of the way, to get behind him. Yeah. I mean that's uh that's a lot of detail. Yeah. So I'm, the videos are yet to come, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm I I don't whoever the guy was, thank you. <laughs> because this is a testament to everybody and it's a good conversation starter um for you to start developing a plan and you start thinking. You never really answered the question, what do you do when it says no guns allowed? We're not going to, are we? I don't think I, you you said it best when you said like it's you can't really answer it because I mean I I have a plan. I mean, I Everybody's know what I do. Everybody's gonna know you carry there if you tell them you carry. Right. Where it says no guns allowed, and I would never do that. No, never. Why would you? I know you'd have to be crazy. I mean, you could get in trouble. <laughs> right. You you got to understand what's coming your way. All right, uh, Gun Talk Nation, you guys are great. Uh, Chris, thank you for hopping on. Uh, and th- Ryan, thank you for letting me steal the show. Uh, but Ryan's going to be back, I swear. He's going to be back, and he'll be doing this again for you guys next week. You guys, enjoy the rest of your day. 